Good morning and thank you for being here. Today we are announcing charges against 10 former National Football League players who were accused of defrauding an NFL health care program meant to benefit retired players and their families. These former players have been charged in two separate indictments with conspiracy, wire fraud, and health care fraud for submitting fraudulent claims to the health care plan for expensive medical equipment that was never purchased and never received. The Gene Upshaw NFL Player Health Reimbursement Account Plan, what I'll refer to as the plan throughout my remarks, provides for tax-free reimbursement of out-of-pocket medical care expenses incurred by eligible former players, their spouses, and their de uh, dependents. Once el eligible players retire, they're not taxed on reimbursements from the plan so long as those reimbursements are for actual medical care expenses that they've incurred. As a result of the fraud, more than $3.9 million in phony claims were submitted to the plan, and the plan paid out approximately $3.4 million on those claims between mid-2017 and mid-2018. The two indictments involved different players, but the crimes charged were carried out in almost identical fashion. The ringleaders of the fraud recruited other eligible former players by offering to submit or assist in submitting fake claims to the plan. In exchange, the ringleaders demanded kickbacks ranging from a few thousand dollars to $10,000 or more for each fraudulent claim that they submitted. If a participant agreed to this scheme, the leaders and recruiters obtained personal information from the players so that the information could be used to complete and submit a false claim form on their behalf. In each case, the forms submitted in support of the claim were completely fabricated. These included things like fake invoices from medical supply companies and forged letters and prescriptions from medical care providers. The exact size of each claim varied, but they were typically in the range of forty dollars to $50,000 each. When a defendant received his reimbursement check, he then kicked back the agreed upon amount to the ringleader or the recruiter. This process was repeated over and over and over again, placing the integrity of the plan at risk. By defrauding the plan and treating it like their own personal ATM, sadly, the defendants placed the plan's tax-exempt status at risk and threatened the ability of law-abiding former players to continue to receive tax-free reimbursements for legitimate medical expenses for themselves or their families. The fraud only stopped when Cigna, the insurance company that administers the plan, detected some of these uh, claims, began refusing to pay them, and then referred the matter to the fraud section of the Department of Justice's criminal division for further investigation. 